two. Hello again. In this lesson we're going to look at how to accompany a jig on the acoustic guitar. The jig in question for this lesson is the Swallowtail Jig. It's an easy um, tune to accompany. There are only two chords in it. Now the important thing, the jig rhythm is 6-8 rhythm and you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's a good idea to tap your toe along to the music on the one and the four beats, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the strong pattern we're using to accompany the jig is one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Two down strums coming quite quickly together there. One, two, three, four, the three and the four. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. If you're new to uh, accompanying Irish music, I think it's a good idea to just use two down strums per bar to familiarize yourself uh, with the chord changes. So it's a strum down on the one beat and on the four beat. I'll just run to try a little bit of the track again to show you what I mean. And also use a soft pick when uh, strumming along to this kind of music. And also remember, if you want to slow down the tempo of the song, jigs are played quite fast, um, go to the settings bar underneath the video and you can adjust the tempo speed there back to maybe 70%, 75% or slower if you wish. When I played part A of the tune, you will have noticed that I stayed down here in the open position for the two chords, the E minor and the D. And when I played the part B, I moved up the neck of the guitar and I played this voicing for the E minor chord. So I've got my index finger, first finger on the seventh fret of the fifth string, that note is E. Same as the, uh, an octave higher than the uh, sixth string. I've got my third finger then on the uh, ninth fret of the fourth string. And my pinky on the ninth fret of the third string. So it's a lovely, it's a nice voicing. It's a good chord to know because you can play that chord from both minor and major, E minor and E major. Because the chord, so technical info, the chord is made up of um, first note and the fifth note of the E scale. <coughs> There's no third note of the chord there and the third note is the chord which determines whether it's major or minor. So that chord is E minor, so we're going, instead of using this, for part B we're moving up. And then for the D, the D major chord, I'm just moving that chord shape back two frets to this position. 
index finger on the fifth fret. Now when we're playing this chord we can't let that sixth string ring out because it's very discordant. So what I'm doing there is I'm just slightly muting that with my thumb. Again, you concentrate on, uh, when you're strumming, concentrate on the 5th, 4th and 3rd strings. If you manage to ring out the 2nd or 1st lightly, it doesn't really matter. Again, it's just an optional extra to um, enhance your playing. You can play part A and B down in the open position, and the second time you're playing the tune, play part A and B up here in the um, alternative voicing. One, two. <laughs> Thank you.